Hi there, my name is Fede Korpshoek for WordPress King. And in this video, I will show you how to make a beautiful website using the Monstroid 2 theme. It is an amazing theme and I have fallen in love with it. In this video, I will show you how to get the theme, how to install the theme, how to import demo content so your website is complete within a few minutes and then you can adjust it. I will show you how to adjust the logo, how to adjust the colors in the website so it will be your brand. I will show you how to work with the Power Builder, an extremely powerful builder that comes with the Monster 2 theme. I will show you how you can configure the footer widgets, add blog post, change the menu and much more. I will show you how to make a beautiful website using this amazing theme. Before we go to the tutorial, let me put on some music and show you a few example websites. And in this tutorial, this is one of the pages we are going to make. So watch this video and see how amazing the Monstroy 2 theme is. So the first two things we need are a domain name and web hosting. And what is web hosting? It's basically a really fast computer that's on for 24 seven, which holds your complete website and is always accessible. And in order to get it, go to hostgatordc.com. This is the place where I host all my websites. They have 24 seven support. You can have live chat with them. So I host my websites here. And if you want to get web hosting, click over here on web hosting. You can choose between three different plans, hatchling plan, the baby plan and the business plan. The business plan you can forget, you don't need that. And the hatchling plan is if you want to have only one website or if you want to start with one website. And the baby plan is when you want to have multiple websites. You pay $5.95 and you can have 10 domain names. Then you only pay for the domain names and you pay only $5.95 per month for all the websites. You can always upgrade. So I started with the Hatchling plan, one single domain and the website $3.95. I can give you some discount. I say sign up now. We need to register a domain name. If you already have one, you can click over here. If you don't have one, click here, register a new domain name. And for instance, if I want to have Facebook, of course, it will say it's not available. In my case, I want to go for Monstroid 2 because that's the theme I'm going to use. And it's still available. HostGator gives you some other options. I don't use this. I never use it. I always want to stick with the .com version. I scroll down and I uncheck domain privacy protection. It's when you don't want to reveal your name and your address and stuff. I have no problem with that. So I uncheck it and I'm going to choose a hosting plan. We have already chosen the hatchling plan and the billing cycle. The longer the billing cycle, the more discount you get. I go for three months and it says you will pay $10.95 per month, but I will give you some discount later. My username will be monstroid2. My security pin one, two, three, four. And here you need to fill in some details, my email, my first name, last name, company, phone address. And here I have to choose my payment method, credit card or PayPal. So I will fill this in. I would like to pay with credit card. And I scroll down and here are additional services. I don't need them. I uncheck them all. 
you can do this all in WordPress. And it says $45.80, but I have a special coupon code, which has at least 25% discount. And it's WordPress King 25. If I say validate, then I need to scroll up again, uncheck the protection, scroll down, and now you pay only $37.59. I agree with everything and I check out. It says payment completed, get ready, we're setting up your account. And what you need to do now, you need to go to your email address you filled in. So I go to wp-king.com forward slash round cube. And as you see, I have three emails and the one I need is the HostGator your account info email. So I open it and here it says my control panel is at this link and I can log in with my username monstroid2 and my password. I copy it and I paste it and I say login. I close this, I close this. And now I need to install WordPress and I want to do it by clicking on this icon, WordPress, one click installation. And here I can select my domain. I have only one, monstroid2.com. And I can say, I want to install my WordPress website on monstroid2.com forward slash. And then here you can fill in a directory, but I just want to install it on monstroid2.com. So I click on next and my blog title will be monstroid the best WordPress theme ever. My username will be this one, my first name, my last name, and my email address, monstroid2 at wp-king.com. I scroll down, I agree with everything, and I say install now. WordPress is installing right now, and here is the link with my username and my password. If I open this now in a new tab, it probably won't work yet. Why is that? It can take a while before the registration of the domain gets active because the whole world needs to know it. Uh, they don't want to have duplicates. So it can take between 20 and 30 minutes, in some cases two hours. So I will be back with you when my website is online. It is now 20 minutes later, so I refresh the website and now it says website coming soon. This means that the website is online and I can log in. So I click on admin login and now I need my login details. I can find them in my cPanel username FerdyCorp. I copy this, I paste it and I go for the password. I copy it and I paste it. I say login. I close this one. I close all the other windows. And what I like to do, I like to clean things up. This is the back end of the website. And if I click over here, I say visit site. This is the front end of our website. Everybody in the world that visits monstroid2.com right now will see this. So our website is live. So let's change it. I go to the back end and I want to clean things up a little bit. First, I go to plugins. I want to delete all the plugins I don't use. I close this one. No, thanks. I see Jetpack over here, I don't want that. In my opinion, it's a big mess right now, the website. So I want to clean this up. In order to do that, scroll down, and here we see we have five plugins. Three are active, two are inactive. A few have an update available. I want to delete them all. So I say, select all, bulk action, deactivate them all. Apply, they're all inactive right now. I check this again, all the plugins are selected. And I say bulk action, delete and apply. Yes, I want to delete them. And there they go. They are deleted one by one. And now they are all gone. So if I go to the dashboard, I see welcome to WordPress. I dismiss this and I see I have one post and one page. Those come with WordPress. So if I go to the front end, I open it in a new tab. Here's a WordPress blog post. So I click on it and it's called hello world. What you'll see over here, monstroid2.com slash index.php and the date and the title. I don't like this and Google doesn't like this either. So I go to the backend, I go to settings, permalinks, 
and I want to change it to post name. So it looks really clean over here. I have my website, my domain name, and after that comes the blog post name or the page name. So I select post name, I scroll down, I save the changes. All right, now if I click over here and I go to the homepage, and I click on hello world, you will see it's called monstroid2.com slash hello world. A lot better in my opinion. So let's go back to the dashboard. I want to delete this message over here and I want to delete all the pages, the sample pages. So I click on post and if I hover over it, I can move to the trash. And now I go over here to the trash and I can delete it permanently or I can empty the trash. Here you can delete individual blog posts and here you can empty the whole trash. So maybe you throw away 10 blog posts, you can empty the trash and then they all will be gone. And here you can select them individually. Same goes for pages, one page, trash, and then I go to the trash of the pages over here. And I say delete permanently. I go to the dashboard again. It says there's an update, so I click over here. And that is our theme. I update it for now, update theme, and I go back to the dashboard. And the last thing, I collapse all these things. And I drag them over here to the left. So this is what I like. And the last thing I want to change my username. I click here, edit my profile or I go to users, your profile. And there you can change the look, feel if your backend I use default. I will fill in my first name, my last name, my nickname. And I want to be seen as Ferdy Korpazoek. I can change my password. I say generate password. I make my own one. And I say update profile. Now you see how the Ferdy Korpazoek instead of Ferdy Corp. I go to the dashboard. Now my backend of my website is really clean. And now we can build something up from scratch. I will be working with the Monstroid 2 theme. In order to get it, let's go to wp-king.com and I go to themes and I search for Monstroid 2 over here. I click on it, it's $75. But what I love about this theme, for instance, we have the Enfold theme, the Avada theme, all kinds of themes. And if you buy this, you pay once for one website. So if you make a second website with the same theme, you have to buy it again. And although those are great themes, it's not nice to spend every time $60 for a website. But with the Monstroid theme, it's a little bit more expensive, but you can make unlimited websites with only one license. So I click on more details. At this moment, I get 20% off. So I don't pay 75, but I pay only 60, just like the other themes. But this theme, I can use it unlimited time. So I really like this. We can take a look at a live demo. So I click over here. I open it in a new tab. And here it shows us something, a nice video in the background. You can scroll down. You can watch this in a really beautiful way. You can scroll down here. You see different kinds of demos. You can install a complete website with a demo. I will show you that later. And there are a lot of different themes. So all these websites you see over here, they're all made with this one theme, Monstroid 2. They're coming more demos. You can import them in your website. A lot of things are customizable, like the header, logo at the left, menu at the right, logo above, logo in the middle. I will show you how things work, but I am in love with this theme. It's amazing. So I don't wait any longer. I click here on buy now. I buy it with some discount. I really like that. So let me see. I check it out for $60, 100% GPL license. I can use it unlimited times. I check out now. I need to enter my email address. It's monstroid2 at wp-king.com. And I continue. My first name and last name. I'm from the Netherlands. My phone number, my zip. 
and everything's correct, choose payment method. Now I go to step three, my payment method. I want to pay with my credit card, so I click pay via card. No additional cost, just $60. And I process this. The order is in progress. Please keep this page open. We may give you a call to confirm your order. Let me grab my phone. I just got a phone call from Template Monster. They asked me what my email address was. And when I said it, they said, okay, within five minutes, you will get the download link. It may take a couple of minutes. Please check your junk bulk folder just in case. Okay, so I go to my email address again. And here I see confirm your registration. I confirm my email. And I need to create a password. So I do that over here. And I proceed to my account. And now I go to template monster order details. Thank you for your order. And I can download the template. So I click over here. And over here I click on download. I can check the template documentation while it's downloading. So I click over here. And here you can see all the instructions. But you don't need them because I'm showing you how you can do things. I close this. And I close this one. This one. This one I keep it open. Let me see. I close my email account. And I close this one also. It's quite a big file, so I don't think it's only the template. I think there's more. So I will open it in Finder and extract the zip file. So I go to Finder. As you see, it's 549 megabyte. I unpack it. And here it says the theme, Monstroid 2. So let me go to the website, to the back end, and go to Appearance, Themes. I want to add a new one so I click over here I click on upload theme and I choose my own theme from my computer I go to downloads to the template folder I just extracted theme monstroid 2 open it and install now I want to activate the theme then I need to install a few other plugins with the theme. So I click over here on begin installing plugin. I click here and I say install. And then I go back to themes. You know, I like to keep it clean. So I remove the 2015 theme. I click over here. I say delete. Okay. Same goes for this one. Theme details, delete. And theme details. Delete. Okay. So if we go to our website in a new tab, this is how our website looks like. So let's change it. You can click on start install. So I click on start install. This is okay. This is okay. This is a risk. I'll just try it. I say next. And we can select the skin and start installation. So if you want to see how a website looks like, click on view demo. I click on command view demo so I can view all the demos. And I will take a look. This is the main one. Looks really nice. Maybe you like a, a different layout. You go to the second one, construction. Maybe this is where you're looking for. Or the third one, fashion. More for blogging, I guess. Corporation. I like this one. Really nice. So I remember this one. This, if you have a web shop. Fitness. For a lawyer, of course, you can change all these things. So if you want to have a website about your own company, but you're not a lawyer, you can still use this one and change all the things according to your wishes. The way this theme displays, everything is really beautiful. I like this. And again, you can use this for unlimited websites. So that's really nice. I think I made my choice. 
it will be corporate. So I close them all, command W, and I click on select skin. And I go for a full install, I click on next. And everything that's needed within the theme, like these plugins, will be installed at the same time. So it takes a lot of work out of your hands because this theme is doing everything for you. Here you can say append demo content or replace it. I want to replace it. I had an empty website so I can replace it and I click on next. In order to import the demo content, I need to fill in my password. So I will do that. And I say import content. And right now it's regenerating the thumbnails. Everything is on automatic pilot. I do not have to do anything. I just can wait. So it says, congratulations, you're all set. I want to view the site, so I click over here. And this is the website we have. A nice top bar over here with our address, phone number, you can click on it and call. Opening time, our logo, call to action, and the menu. And as you see, the pictures are blurry. That's because we can't use them, but we can replace them with other images. I will show you how to get free images. And let me take a look. As you see, there is a style with two colors with a gradient. It's kind of greenish and purple. And I will show you how you can change the look and feel of your website with a few clicks. Here again, green and purple. I really like this theme. It looks amazing. There are a lot of options to display the information on your website as you want it. And I want to show you how I can customize the website in a way that I can implement my own style and my logos into the website. In order to do that, go to customize over here. And if you want to follow along with the same images I use, then go to a new tab, wp-king.com, go to tutorials, Monstroid 2 tutorial, scroll down and click on download the images I use in the tutorial. I will bring them to the desktop, click on it, remove this and we're all set. I close this. And over here, we have a lot of options for our website. Because I'm making this tutorial on a MacBook 13 inch, I need to press command minus once in order to see the website as it is in full screen. So command minus. You can also see how it will look on a tablet or on a phone. Now I'll leave it like this. I go over here to the site identity. The site title, it can be Ferdy Corpusuk Media. You can name it as you want it. And the tagline, I say you deserve it to be seen. And you can say show tagline after the logo. And when you do that, immediately you will see the result like this. You deserve it to be seen. I don't want it. And actually I don't want to have a page preloader. When I open the website, before it's loaded, you will see this icon over here until the page is completely loaded. I don't want it, so I remove this. And now you see the page will load immediately without the preloader. I like that. I go back to the general site settings. And I go to logo and favicon. Logo type, I want it to be an image. I can change this image. So I say change image and then I can upload files. I click here on select. I go to my desktop, to Monstroid 2, to the settings, and here is my logo. I like to keep it in the height and wide as I want it to be. So if you are on a Mac, you can press Command Shift 4, and then you can see, okay, this is 34 pixels high, maybe a little bit less, and 100 wide. Press Escape. And then I know I want my logo to be the same height, so I make it 35 pixels height. So over here, it says 35 pixels height. I open it and I choose the image. Now you will see this is my new image. But if you watch this on the retina screen, you can scroll down 
and upload a Retina logo. I do it and what I do then, I upload a logo that is twice the size of this one. So let me see, 70 in height. I open it, I choose the image. You also can choose for an invert logo. I don't use the invert option on this website, so I will leave that blank. I scroll down and a side icon. I want to upload a side icon. It can be 512 pixels. It needs to be square. So I say select image, upload files, select files. And here is it, the icon 512 by 512. Select. And I say save and publish. I scroll up and I go back to the breadcrumbs. What you see here, if you go to a different page, the about us page or the accordion page, for instance, you see you're at home accordion. And maybe if you go to news, standard post, you see home 2016 November. I don't want this on my website. So I don't enable it. I uncheck this and what you will see, it will be gone. So that's fine with me. I go to social links, show social links in the header, not yet. In the footer, over here, they're already here, so I leave it as it is. And to blog post that people can share it. And so social sharing on a single blog post. Only the single blog post I want it to be shown. So I uncheck this one and I save it and publish it. The page layout. It's interesting if I press command minus, minus, minus. You see the header is full white. My logo is here at the left and the call to action here at the right. If I say the header needs to be boxed, then it will be boxed and it will look like this. This is the wide of our website and I want to decrease it. I want to decrease it to 1120 pixels. So you will see it will decrease and now it will be somewhere over here. The same goes for this image. I can decrease the size. I can make it boxed. I keep it full white and if I scroll down, here's the footer. You see it's from left to right in this background. I can change it to boxed and then it looks like this. I want to keep everything full white, 1120. The sidebar white, when you have a blog post and you have a sidebar, it will be one third of the page. And I think it's a great amount. So I leave it as it is. I save it and I publish it. I press command zero and command minus. Let me go back to color scheme. I have here the regular scheme and you will see all these colors. It's green, it's purple. I can change those. Here you see accent color one, it's the green one and accent color two, it's the purple one. If you go to the file on my desktop, which you can download from my website and go to colors, you see the color codes I want to use is the same as the logo. The first one is this one and the second one it's this one. What you will see, this becomes orange and this becomes red. You see there are still a few colors over here. That's because all the links in the website are still green as you see over here. So I copy this color again and I change it to orange. And now you will see this is orange. That's how it works. Link hover, of course it will be the red color again. I can change the color of the text. I think it's a little bit too gray, too light. So I can change the text color to a little bit darker color, something like this. And you'll see it will change immediately. I want this color to be at every header. So if I go to home, you'll see this is a header. And if I scroll down, I can change all these colors to this one or to a color you want it to be. paste it everywhere. And now you see it becomes orange. So here you can select the logo H1, H2, H3 till H6. So as you see already, it's getting more in a different style, the same style as my logo, but you still see those colors over here and over here. 
over here. I want to change those colors. I save it and publish it. And I go back and I go to gradient scheme. This one I don't use. Gradient scheme, color one, the orange one, and the second color, this one. And what you will see now, I save it and publish it. And I go to the website, I refresh it. Now you see the gradient is the same as my color. So with a few clicks, I change the look and feel of my website. And that is what I love about this theme. There are a lot of themes where you can change the main colors, but then still you need to go back to every single element and change the colors in that element. And here it's done for the whole website. So that is what I love about this theme. Here it's not done because this is a background image and we can change that. So you see the look and feel of our website is completely different. Even the logos over here, I love it. So let's go back to the customizer. Then we have invert scheme. What does it mean? It means that are the colors when the background is dark. So for instance, if I change this accent color to yellow, you'll see it happening over here. So I change it back to where it was. And if I would say the text color will be black and I scroll down, you see this text is black. So I would leave it as this. The only thing I want to change is this link hover and I change it to our color like this. And all the headers and stuff, you can change to a different color. I like to leave it white. So that's the invert scheme. And we go to colors. This for if you have a background color, if your website is not completely white. What I see here, it's not full white in the header. So I go back to general settings, page layout, and the header type is boxed. I want it to be full white, like this. I save it, I refresh it one more time, and now it's over the full white. So if I press command minus again, it will still be here at the left and here at the right. I like that. Okay, go back. I go to typography and I go to the about page. And here's some text, some body text. So I click here on body text. And if I want to change it, I can do that. I can make the size bigger. So if I say 25, you see it's bigger now. I leave it at 18 and I can change the line height, change the two. You see there's now much more space between all the lines. I can do some letter spacing, 0 0.3. This is way too much of course, but it shows you the possibilities within the website. So all the text besides the titles is changed now. I change this back to zero, this one to 1.72, and I can change a different font, for instance, iceberg, and then it's a different font on the complete website. I change it back. And the same you can do for all the headings and the breadcrumbs if you will use them, or the entry meta. That's if you go to news, click on news, here is some meta text. I think it's too small. So I change it to 15 and then it's a little bit bigger. I like that. And you can change the text. You can make it italic. So you can do all kinds of things with it. I save it, I publish it and I go back, back to the header. I scroll up, I go to the homepage by clicking on the logo. And I can change the style. Right now I have a logo here, a call to action here, the menu and the top bar. I can change the look and feel of it by clicking on styles and select style one like this or style two, style three, etc. You can take a look for yourself. I like style one. So I leave it like that. And I want to get rid of this over here. I don't want this title to be here. I think it's a waste of the space. So let me see, I go back to the top panel and this text over here, if I uncheck it, this will be totally gone. That's not what I want. I want to have the top panel, only not this text. So I remove this text and what it will do, it will automatically remove this area like this. I like this. I can select the background color. I think it's okay. You will see the color, you will see the text and the link. So everything is fine. I go back. And I go to the header elements, 
book an appointment. It's the call to action. I will say contact us. And if I go to the contact page, I get a link over here. I copy this link and I paste it over here. I save it. Now if I refresh this and I click on contact us, I go to the contacts page. Go back, header contact block. You can change the text over here. You could say uh, New York, change the address. And let's talk, change the phone number and change the phone number in the link. Because if you click here, you will call, you will switch to FaceTime or something else and you can call them. We are open from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. in my case. And save it and publish it. And go back and go to the main menu. You can make the menu sticky. So if I scroll down, it's not sticky. But if I make it sticky like this, it scrolls with me. I like it. I can enable a description over here like this, but I don't like that. So. I go back and now I go back to general site settings, social links. Now I want to place them in the header. So I click over here and what you will see now, you have my address, my phone number, my opening times. And here at the right, you will see my social media icons. I like it. I save it, publish it and I go back. We can go to menus over here. You can change the menu over here. I leave it as it is for now. I will take a look at it later. Same goes for sidebar. You can integrate it with MailChimp, make an API key. If you want to follow my MailChimp tutorial, please click over here. You can see how it works. I will leave it for now. I leave the widgets. I go to the footer. So I scroll down. Here we have four footer widgets and we can change the style. I can choose to show the footer logo. So it will be over here like this, but I don't want it because I've already over here. So I don't check it and I want to change this like this. So every year it will change automatically. You don't have to go to all your websites and change it manually. I don't want the dot at the end like this. I like it. I like it even better if I do it like this. You can try a different style over here. Footer background color, you can change the color over here. Widget areas, you can have three or four or two or one. I like four, so I leave it as this. You can show a footer menu, so the menu will be also over here. Like this, but I don't need it. I uncheck it. Scroll up, go back, go to footer contact block. You can have contact block and you can activate it. I leave it as this. I go back, ads management, you can place ad codes over here. A static front page, you can select a static front page or choose to show your latest blog post. I leave it as a static page. It's the home page and the blog page is the blog page. You can select it over here. A 404 page, I want the background color to be orange, no image. Go back. And here you can add additional CSS in order to style your website. And over here I see export, import. And here you can export your settings. All these settings, all the customizations over here, you can export them or you can import them. So you could export these settings and import them on a different website and you will have the same look and feel in your website. You can also switch to a different demo, but it's not necessary. So. I close this and this is our homepage right now and I'm going to style this. I'm going to add images and change the look and feel of our website. How can I do that? I click on edit page. I close this over here and we start with a slider. Let me introduce you to the power builder, the page builder of Monstroid 2. So over here, if we take a look at the website, you see over here, we have a slider with some text and again, a new area 
with some services. How is this build up in the Power Builder? Over here, we have a section. That's the outer area over here. Within that, we have rows. So if I click here, it says row settings, row module settings. We can have two rows or three rows. And within those rows, we have modules. So if I scroll down, I can add a new section and I can make rows in that section. For instance, two times 50% and insert that row. I can insert a module, for instance, a call to action, call to action and a button with a URL. And now you have all kinds of settings. I save it and exit. I go up and I say update. And here is my call to action it is 50%. I'll explain this later. I will close this now. I scroll down. And I remove this. I scroll up and I go to the slider over here, this one. At the slider module, I click on this icon. So I will go to the module settings. I see there are three sliders. The first one, second one, and the third one. I will close the second one and the third one. And I click again on this icon. So I go to the settings of the first slider. Here we can change the title, this title. And I say, you deserve it to be seen. I can change the button, more information, URL or contact us with a URL. And here we can change the background image. So I say upload an image. I go to upload files, select files, and I will upload a few files. I go to home and I upload all these files. So I select command A. I select them all, or control A, and I open them. I select this one over here and I say set as background like that. Background image position, that's for mobile use. So if someone opens it on a mobile, I want it to be focused on the face. So I would say the upper right corner. So background image position will be top right. You can add a background overlay, a different color, or you can um, import a video. So I save it and then I scroll down over here and I say use parallax effect. I save and exit. I update it over here. And then when I go to home and I refresh the page, you see here's a new picture. You deserve to be seen. I scroll down more information or contact us. So there's a call to action. I want to change the color of this text to black. How can I do that? I edit the page. I go to the slider settings over here. You deserve to be seen. I open this one. I go to advanced design settings and I can change the color of the header text. So I click over here. And I say, make it dark gray, something like this. I can change the size and make it smaller, save it, save and exit, update and refresh. Now this text will be black or dark gray and smaller. So that's how you can change this over here. I see the parallax thing is not working. So let me take a look at that sliders, scroll down, use parallax. And here I can change the method to true parallax, save and exit, update, refresh. And if I scroll now, you see there's a nice parallax animation. So that's how you can change this over here. We had this. And now we have this. I scroll down and I see all these nice animations in the style of our website. And I want to change a few things over here. 
you see here those words are in two rows and this one is not i want to keep it consistent so i go to the back end and i go to services and click on services and here is the human resources planning, business plan, consulting, exit planning. I need those three. I click on quick edit. And hereafter, I type this open br space forward slash close. And I remove this. What this does, it says it needs to make a break. So human resources, it's already doing that here. And then it makes a break, it goes to the new line. The same goes for this one. I update it over here. I do the same. I paste it. And the third one, I paste it. I update it. I refresh the page. And now this third one is in the second line. I like it. What I also would like is that these icons and text will be aligned in the center over here. How can I do that? I go to customize, I go to typography, body text, and I want to bring it to the middle. I scroll down so I can see it immediately and I click here at text align to center like that. I save it and I publish it and I close it. So like this, really nice. I like it as it is, so I go to the next thing. I like this one also. Uh, if I click on read more, there's no link attached, so I can do that. And if I take a look at this over here, we have a line, a separator, a title, a text with two rows, and a call to action button. Let's see how that will look on the back end. So I click on edit page. I scroll down. Here we have the slider. Here we have the services and here we have the text. Then we have two rows or two columns and a call to action, the button. If I click over here, let me open the website in a new tab by clicking on command and over here. I go to about us and I copy this link. I close this and I paste it here in the button URL. Open in the same window, the text is read more. It's aligned. I can disable it on different devices. And I say save and exit. Okay, then I take a look. I save it and take a look. Read more and if I click over here, I go to about, I like it. I scroll down and here I see some blurry photos with some information, so I will change it I want people to know that this is the theme I'm working with. So I go to edit page, I scroll down, text button, and then here it is, the theme. What I will do, I say insert module, and I go for text. Over here, I click on it. Text is in the center, and I say the theme. I select it, I change paragraph to heading three. Save and exit, and then I drag it above theme. Now I save it, refresh, and now it says the theme. Okay, I'm going to place some pictures over here. How can I do that? I go to the back end and I go to theme. Click over here. I click on the first one, and I can change the name. So I could say Pamela. Dawson. I copy this, I go to edit and I paste the name over here and I say okay. As you see, it's really nice. Monstory2.com slash theme slash Pamela Dawson. I scroll down and here at Futured Image I remove this image and I set the Futured Image and it is this lady over here. I set the Futured Image, I update it and I go to theme again. What you can do, I like to work like this. I open this by pressing command and click, just like here, click, click while holding command, 
or control on the computer. And now I have three tabs and I can work faster. I scroll down, I remove the featured image, I go to the next one, remove the featured image, the third one, remove it. Then I go to the third one again and I select the featured image, which is this one. I go to the second one. So in that way I can work faster. I go to the third one again and this is a girl again, so no Richard White, but Deborah Kingsley. Why not? Paste it here and update it. You can say control tab and then you go to the next. Next. And now if I go to our website, I close these. I scroll down. There are their images, but I really don't like the way the images are displayed. You barely can see them. And this is not as I want it to be. So I click on edit page. I scroll down again. I go to theme. I click on this icon for the settings. Four columns. I scroll down. And I want to show the name, I want to show the photo and the description, the position, show social profile links and the layout. I want it to be grid boxes too. Save it and exit, update, view the page, scroll down. And now you see the picture, their name, their title some information about them and if you hover over it you see their social media links so i like it very much i scroll down here we see the old colors of the website so i want to change the background in order to do that i go to the back end i scroll down again and i go to the call to action i click on the settings and i go to advanced design settings and i scroll down and here you see the background image. I upload an image. I've already uploaded it. It's this one in the colors of our website. And I set it as a background. I save it and exit. And I could change, of course. The call to action, book an appointment. And they should go to the context page. So I click on this link. I copy it. And this will be the URL. I save it. Update. And this is starting to look really amazing. Let me see if I can pr improve it even more. If I go over here to this place, to the section module settings, I want to have a background image and I want it to be the same. But this one I want to have as a parallax background. So let me see. Yes. And I want it to be true parallax. But now I need to go back to call to action. And go to advanced design settings. And remove the background over here because it's overruling the background image of the section. So this one I remove like that. Save it. And let's see what happens. Now we see the background is moving. It's even better. I really like it. And as you see, our website is totally different than in the beginning, different colors. We adjusted a few things and it's quite easy to do as you see. And our website is getting better and better. And you don't have to spend hours. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars to other people that will do it for you. You can do it yourself with this amazing Monstroid 2 theme. I will add these images. I go to testimonials and what I did, I will do again. I press control or command, click here, click here, click here. I will remove it, control tab, remove, remove. So the longer you make websites, the, the faster it will go. I will um, add 
this one and this one this one scroll up update scroll up update and scroll up and update and that way you can save a little time go to the website scroll down and here it is it's looking great here we have a few blog posts and i see this is still a color i don't want on this website so i probably didn't change the colors over here for the link so i go to customize i go to color scheme regular scheme i select this color i want the links to be this color here is no color which is green maybe i should change it over here let me see yes it's working okay save and publish i want these blog posts to be four next to each other so i click on edit page here it says posts and what you will see we have four columns but we only see two columns that's because i'm on a macbook and it says over here four columns but on a laptop you have two columns in a row i want to change this to four i save it and exit this is everything to do with the responsiveness of this theme which is great and now if I take a look, it will show four blog posts in a row like this. But you see, it doesn't look right. So I will change a few things. Maybe I can change it to three and over here also to three. And I want to change the post to three, save and exit, update and refresh. And now we see the title, the date, by me, read more. It's looking really nice. I click on those three blog posts, holding command. One, two, three. And I edit them all. Edit post, edit post, and edit post. I scroll down again. Remove the featured image. Here again. And the third one then i go to the first one again and i add one i go to upload files select files go to block open these three upload them i select the first one update i select the second one and update and i select the third one and I update and now we go to the website to our home page and we started with this and now we have this really nice if you ask me so if i go and edit the page and i scroll down i'll see there are more settings these same settings are in the customizer but you can change it on every page so every page you can style individually i could give it a sidebar it's not necessary and if it says inherit it means that it has the settings of the customizer and you can change it so header layout i could make it boxed or full white it's already full white so if I go to header style, what I like, if I take a look over here, you see we have a white background here and it's not interfering with this image over here. But what I can say, header overlay, enable and save it. And that will give us transparent header like this. So now you see it's transparent. So you see the background over here through the menu, 
But if I go to About Us, I have the white background again. So that is what you can do. You can style every page individually. So I will leave it as it is. I like it. And I can choose for the invert color scheme. I will not do that. Header elements. I can remove the top panel or other stuff. I can enable a search button only for the home page. So if I say enable, I go to breadcrumb, I can enable it. The footer settings, I can change things. So if I save it now, only the home page will have a search box over here. But if I go to a different page, it won't have a search box. So that's how it works. If we take a look over here at pages, static elements, we use elements to display information on the website. And here we have all the elements that you can use. So if I hold command and click on edit page and drag this to the left, and I would say insert modules, you see here all kinds of modules or elements, just how you want to call it. And over here at pages, static element, you can see examples. So if I click over here, holding command, Here's an accordion, a title with some text. And if I click over here, this one closes and this one opens. Same goes for here. So that's how it looks like. So if you want to use it, you can just take a look. Hey, how does an accordion look like? And then you can work with it. Audio, a way to show MP3 files. And it shows different ways because there are more options. How about an animated counter? You can do it like that. Or a blurb. You see, you can place the icons in different places. You can make them bigger, smaller. So it's a really nice way to see what elements or modules can do. Call to action, nice background, nice color. Call to action button, or like this, or like that. So take a look at those and use it in your website. So if we want to create a new page, for instance, I can say page, and I want to call this a test page. I want to use the Power Builder, so I click Use Power Builder. And here's our first section with our columns. So I can say columns. I want to have only one. And I insert a module, which is a slider so i click here on slider and then i need to add a slide which is get access to our ebook click here for the ebook then you can place a button and i scroll down i go for a background which is again, this one set as background, scroll down. I want it to cover the background and I want it to be parallax. So I save it over here and I scroll down, use parallax, true parallax. And I don't want to show controls because I only have one slider. So save it and exit. Publish. View the page. Okay, well, do you see? This text is not readable and the white is not completely full white. So I go back to edit page and I go to the row settings. So here we have the section settings, the row settings and the module settings or the element settings. So I click on the row settings and here it says, make this row full white, save and exit. And I go to the slider, to the slider again, and I go to advanced design settings. I need to have the header text color. So I make this one white, save and exit. I scroll down, let me try something else, header style, header overlay, 
enable. Let's see what it does with the logo and with the call to action. I don't think that is nice. So get access to our ebook. That's okay. Click here for the ebook. And I don't want this to be within the image. So I change it back and here it. Go back to the slider settings over here. Advanced design settings and the header text can be smaller like this. And the button may be bigger. Use custom style for button one. I have only one button so I can change it and I say make it 40. Save it, save it, update it, refresh. This is smaller, this is too big, but it gives you an idea what is possible. Parallax background, it's covering the wide of the website, so that's okay. What else? If we go to pages and you see something over here, you can use it. I want to use a countdown timer. So I go over here, I can insert it over here, and here's the countdown timer. Countdown before the launch of a new course. Just saying something, countdown to a certain date. I can click on now and I can also go over here to the next month, 1st of March at 8 o'clock. Done, save and exit, update. And here it is, countdown before the launch of a new course. Six days, 19 hours, 23 minutes, and 27 seconds. And if I want to, I can make a new section. I click on the plus, two times a half, and I can drag this here at the left. And make a new call to action. Let me know when it is live, something like that. A button, same window, button text, click here. Save and exit, update, refresh. So now we have the same background, but it's now at the left. And at the right, I have let me know when it is live. If I want to make more space over here, I can do that by going to the section, the second one, click on settings, scroll down, padding top, 40 pixels, save and exit. Now you see there's a nice padding over here. Maybe I want these two backgrounds to be the same height. Let me see if we can do that. Go to the second section, to the row settings, advanced design settings, scroll down, and here it says equalize column heights. Yes. Save and exit, update, refresh. It's still not working. I need to do it with a little trick. So I go back, I scroll down, I go to the, to the row settings, advanced design settings, Scroll down and we need a background image or a background color. So I place this one and I think that should be fine. So let's see what happens. Update, refresh and now you see the height is the same. What else can we do? We can add a video in the background like this and I go for the background image or I go for a background video. So I can upload a video. I have a small time lapse, select files. Here it is. 11 seconds, 6 megabytes. 
set as background video, save and exit, update, refresh, I change the title and the button again. Now you see over here, you don't see that good, but you see a background video. And I don't see any padding in the bottom, so I added the page again. So I go to the section settings, I scroll down, 40 pixels in the top and 40 pixels in the bottom. Update, refresh, now you see a padding over here and a padding over here. I know it does not look that appealing, but I'm just showing you how to get things done in this theme. If you go to pages, static elements, please take a look at everything you want to have and then just play around with it and make something beautiful out of it. So let's take a look at this widget area. How can we change it? Go to edit the page and go to appearance, widgets. Here we can change a few things. Over here, we have sidebar widgets. Here you see the sidebar that is on every page. So if I would go to news and block layouts and I go to classic, then you will have a sidebar over here with widgets. So we have a sidebar, that's one third of the page and we have widgets in the sidebar. And here below we have the footer area and in the footer area we also have widgets and we can change them and we can do that over here. So as you see sidebar search about, if I go up, I see search and about. So if I open this, I get all kinds of settings and I can edit them or I can delete this sidebar. And when I do that and I refresh the page, you see no more about. So here below, I want to take a look at those widgets and I want to adjust them. So how can I do that? by going to the backend to widgets and it says over here the footer area we see about services, recent comments and context exactly the same as over here and I want to edit it. I open it over here and I can create a title but in this case I have a logo. I upload a new logo and it's the retina version of my logo which is this one. So I upload it. And here we can change the text. So for instance, for the Corpusuk Media. And I enable the social buttons. I save it. And now if I refresh the page, it says it shows my logo, the text and my social media icons. I don't want to have services over here, so I can delete them. I can collapse this one by clicking on this icon. I open services, I delete them and I don't want the recent comments, so I delete them. And here we have all kinds of widgets about the author, about Monstroid 2. We have that already over here. A calendar, categories and all kinds of stuff. You can even download plugins and use them. We can add Instagram. I would like to go for recent posts over here. I click once. I scroll down and I select the sidebar or the footer area in this case. So I select footer area, add widget, and now it's over here. And I say recent posts in the widget, display the number of posts, five is okay. I save it and I refresh it. Now it looks like this and I want to change the order. I also want to fill the space over here. So first I change the order by dragging this over here, that's it. Now I go to customize, I go to footer, footer styles, and I say widget area columns. I want to decrease it from four to three, save and publish. Now if I scroll down, it looks like this. It's evenly spread and I like it. Let's make a new blog post like this one, only a new one. Go to new, click on post, a new website, something like that. You can use the power builder, I want. I get some text like this, new Alinea. 
and if you say enter you will get a new linear or title if I press shift enter I get a new rule so if I select this over here and I make it a header one this one also gets a header one because when you press shift enter you get a new rule which were within the same area so if I want to have a new alinea I just press enter and that's it so if I would say enter title I select it and I give it a title or a heading then it looks like this if I want to add an image I click on the place where I want the image to be placed I say add media I click on this picture I insert it into the post and I click on it and then I can say I want it to be aligned at the left or at the right or I want it to be smaller or I want to edit it further and then you can change a custom size you can link it to a place or to the media file itself and then update it I can choose a category or I can add a new category which is called news and I edit now it's selected I can change the format I like it as it is and I place it also under business plan consulting I need to have a future image I grab one upload files select files go to block the fourth one or the fifth one set future image and then I can publish it I can view the post it says a new website on this day by Ferdy Korpsoek no comments this is the picture this is the text the first letter has a really nice style to it a new alinea or title or a smaller title you can share it people can leave a reply and that's how it looks like and if I go to recent post it says a new website and when I go to the home page I scroll down over here it says a new website read more and then I go to it that's how it works let me see how we can change the text about the author I go to the back end users Ferdy Corp my name is Ferdy Corpusuk and I am a web designer that has a passion to teach other people what I know about making websites. You can add a picture by using Gravatar. You can do it for yourself. And now if I go to the blog post and it says about the author, my name is Freddy Korpsuk and you can put your own text over here. So that's some information about the amazing Monstroid 2 theme. I hope you like it. Play around with it. And maybe one more thing. If you want to change the menu, go to Appearance, Menus. And here you see all kinds of sub items. You can click on it, remove them. You can save it. Or you can make your own menu. So I click on create new menu. I call this one main underscore menu, create menu. And then I can grab some pages, test page, testimonial posts, view all, contacts, home, images, maps, our theme. Or I can even add custom links, my Facebook page facebook.com slash ferdy corpushoek add to the menu of course all these I can edit by clicking this button add to the menu and I should change these 
I place here the URL and here I say my Facebook page. And I can change the order by dragging like this. Contact images or I can remove it again. And if I say display it on the main navigation, I save it. I click on the logo. Here is my new menu. I can make a sub item. So if I would say images should be a sub item of home and our theme also. And our theme has also a sub item, which is test page. I can save it, refresh it, and then home has an arrow down. If I hover over it, if I hover over this, you can navigate through your menu. So that's how things work. Good luck in making your beautiful website. And if you have any question, please leave a comment. Please like this video and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. My name is Ferdy Korpersoek for WordPress King and I will see you next time. Bye bye.